Hi friends, Lisa Salvatore here, back with another energy report. Today is February 10th, I'm recording this video. Tomorrow is our new moon in Aquarius, February 11th. I've linked that video below. I did do a post and a read about this last week. So tomorrow we have our new moon in Aquarius. This is a wonderful new moon. There's a lot of positive energy surrounding it that is geared towards growth and the future. So if you wanna hear more about that, you can always click on that link after you listen to this. But the more important transit that I wanted to talk about today is Saturn square Uranus. This is an energy that we have been under and will continue to be under strongly. It will be the theme of 2021 and even as we move into 2022 because Saturn will be in Aquarius for the next two years or so and Uranus will be in Taurus until 2025. So Saturn in Aquarius, Uranus in Taurus, those two energies will be squaring each other. So they are speaking to each other in a little bit of a frictional and confrontational aspect where change and growth are definitely going to be pronounced both on the personal level and on the societal level levels. However, it's you know not always going to feel comfortable and at times it's going to kind of even seem like maybe coming out of left field where we think things might be going in one direction and then all of a sudden we get jolted by Uranus and it shifts us in a completely different direction. But the end game of all of that is growth and change and ultimately freedom and liberation. So why is this so significant right now? Because Saturn square Uranus will hit exactitude, exact on three specific dates of this year of 2021. And one of them is February 17th, which is right around the corner. So we've likely been feeling that build up for quite some time. It's going to feel even more pronounced. It can best be described, and I've said this in a few of my other videos, as like a build up and a buzz that is present. It's just like this pulse beneath the surface, this jolt of electricity, it's excitement, it's irritability at times, it's a feeling of just maybe some unease, and that can actually even feel positive <laughs> with the unease, but there's just this essence of things are changing quickly too. And yet Saturn's involved. So Saturn likes its structure and its boundaries, and it wants things to make sense and work out and be fair and be correct. And then Uranus seeks to change everything and flip it upside down, and Uranus doesn't really care how it gets the job done, its main function is to get that job done, right? And Uranus rules lightning, electricity. It also rules over our um, our nervous system, our nerves, as does Mercury, but Uranus rules over our nervous system. Saturn is our circulation. Saturn is also the mineral distribution throughout the body, throughout the physical body. The planets do govern what goes on in the body as well. So pay attention to uh, if you're feeling like you're starting to spin out from all of the energy, and again, depending on your own personal birth chart, your own astrological mapping, you're going to feel this stronger or less stronger, also depending on your sensitivity level. You're going to feel things differently. But hear me out with Saturn. Saturn rules are, it's our structure also, like just the way it's societal structure. It's also our personal structure. It's our skin. It is our skeletal uh, structure. It is, um, think about what the skin is a barrier for us, right? Our skin is a barrier. It's our largest organ. Saturn rules over that. Saturn also, like I said, is responsible for mineral distribution throughout the body. Uranus um, is change. It's energy. It's strong energy. It, it can jolt us. It's sometimes unexpected. It's got that buzz. Um, literally, it can be electricity, so be very mindful when you're with and near electronics and water. Also, when you're driving, you want to be extra conscious of um, so there aren't any unforeseen accidents because Uranus is quick. He is the, you know, like I said, the proverbial lightning bolt that can come in out of nowhere. And if you're paying attention, if you're more conscious, if you're more aware, the effects of that may not be as severe as if you were not paying attention. But when we've got more so with the physical body, when we've got this Saturn Uranus aspect, all year long, but most intense, like I said, it's gonna hit exactly on February 17th. There could be an, a literal depletion of the body, depletion of your minerals. So make sure that you're keeping up with your supplementation around this time, your minerals. Um, I like to use trace mineral, mineral drops in my water, especially after working out, or liquid light is another really good one um, for supplementation. Because with the Uranian energy, it, again, it's like just this heightened, like it's a, it's, it's a, 
it's an excitement, it's a buzz, it can feel really good, it can make you move quickly, but it can also make you spin out and it can also deplete you. And again, depending on your sensitivity level, that will be different for everybody, okay? So just pay a little extra close attention. You also wanna pay close attention around this time with the Saturn Uranus square, what this brings up for you personally, okay? Because collectively it's going to bring up a lot. It already has. Last year, it was Saturn Pluto and the coronavirus, the pandemic was obviously the theme of 2020. In 2021, yes, it still is, but now even more of the theme of 2021 is the vaccines, the vaccinations, also the pandemic still. Aquarius, Saturn and Aquarius, Aquarius is science and technology and what are vaccines, right? They're science. Um, you know, so anyway, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm not gonna go into all of that, but that will be the theme collectively of 2021, one of them, because there will be a few, there will be several, but go to the personal side here and look at what comes up for you, what's already coming up, and what's going to come up stronger as we get towards the 17th into that exact square of Saturn and Uranus, and see what the themes are for you. That is on the 17th of February that we will have that Saturn Uranus square. Pay attention to the body, pay attention to the minerals that you're consuming, that you're keeping up with your self-care, your physical body, so that you don't spin out and burn out, take care while driving, take care in your electronics, all of that good stuff. Forewarned is forearmed, like I always say, or forearmed is forewarned, yeah, forewarned is forearmed. You know, just a little bit of extra awareness goes a long way. The planets do work through us, okay? And the more we know, the more we will be able to put up some sense to it, okay? It may not always be the exact reason why th certain things happen the way that they do, but again, it does speak to how and when things can manifest, what the energy can produce. May not always do it, but it most certainly can. We also have a triple conjunction uh, coming up on a Ven a Venus and Jupiter, which by itself is fantastic because Venus is sweet and Venus is love and Jupiter is growth and benevolence and, you know, spirituality and it's promotion, promoting all good things and, and expanding all of the good that Venus can provide because Venus is what we value and it's what's pleasurable to us. And those two are speaking to each other really, really nicely on the exact date of that is um, on the 11th, on the same day as the new moon at 12 degrees of Aquarius. So that's a really nice energy that goes into that new moon energy of manifestation and of what we want to bring in and of what we love and want more of in our life, okay? In our lives, that is what we wanna focus on, right? And then on the uh, 15th, Mercury will conjunct Jupiter at 13 degrees of Aquarius. Again, the mind, expansion, wanting things to be a certain way and actually seeing how we can have what it is that we want to manifest and what might need to get done to bring us to that point. Then on the 15th, I'm sorry, the 13th Mercury will conjunct Venus and then, yes, I missed that part. On the 13th Mercury, Mercury will conjunct Venus. Again, that's really great for what it is that we love, what it is that we want more of in our lives. Mercury is also retrograde still at this point, and that only heightens this triple conjunction. So again, it's deeper. So really, I'm gonna say again, for this new moon on the 11th tomorrow, this new moon in Aquarius, is such a beautiful time to put the pen to the paper, light a candle, think about what you love, think about what you want in your life, think about what you're willing to do to get to it, and all of the noise you're willing to get rid of to take care of yourself in a manner that you may not have been able to do in the past. That's very important right now. It's all about freedom and bringing in the new and getting rid of what is not working for you and then being able to stand up taller and say, this is what I need, this is what I want, and this is how I'm gonna get it. And that is personal, so it's not something you have to say, it's just something you have to do and embody, right? This is a great time for that beautiful energy around this new moon with that triple conjunction. Even with the Saturn Uranus square, again, I still feel like there's a lot of good that will come of that because we do need change on all levels. And, you know, it's very important that we recognize where our own limitations that we've put on ourselves, which is Saturn, how they need to be shaken up and changed, Uranus. And also, too, you know, Saturn represents the old, Aquarius. Uh, Uranus represents the new, Saturn represents the past, Uranus represents the future. So this is about how these energies are gonna to work together to get you to the future by taking what needs to go with you from the past and then letting go what doesn't. 
And so this is going to be all of 2021. And then again, that Saturn Uranus square will hit exact on June 14th and then again on December 23rd. Yes, so, uh, December 23rd. So three times in 2021, that energy will be very, very heightened and pronounced, but we will still feel it all year long, okay? But you wanna pay very close attention to what's going on right now as we lead up to the 17th, and then especially on that day and the few days after, so that you get a better idea of where this is going to affect your life personally. And again, I will also, I have also linked below how to pull up your own birth chart and your transits. Just ignore the Mars part in the transits that I said, and just look for the moon glyph to show where the moon will hit your chart for the new moon on February 11th. You can see that. That area will also show you what, where is the new coming in? Where, where are you exploring um, your gifts? Where do you want to bring in more energy? Or where, where you might need to bring in more energy? And remember, if you have any planets right now, uh, major planets between 12 and 14 degrees of Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, this triple conjunction, and the new moon are extra important for you. Just keep that in mind. Triple conjunction is important for everybody, but this and the new moon together is more important for the fixed signs simply because of the degrees of the planets and where it's hitting will impact very strongly. And then on the 19th, Pisces will enter, <laughs> the sun will enter Pisces. Mercury retrogrades, messing up my communication. The sun will enter Pisces on February 19th. Happy birthday, Pisces. We shift from all of the air energy of Aquarius, which we've had a lot of. We currently have six planets in Aquarius. It's a lot of mental energy, mental stimulation, air energy, which is really good and can produce a lot of results for us, but it can also make some that are not so used to that energy overthink and overdo it and be in their heads too, too much. And then it can feel like you're spinning out or stressed out or having anxiety. So a little bit of water coming back into the mix is not a bad thing, right? Pisces is a water sign. It's very sensitive, empathetic, dreamy, poetic, spiritual. So as we go into Pisces season, that's more of the flavor as the sun is there, as the sun is in Pisces for the next, um, until March 19th. That is when we're gonna start to feel and see more um, intuitively. It's like the inner vision heightens and opens up. We get much more, um, internal you know we go deeper we go we get more uh, intuitive the um, card that rules over Pisces is the high priestess number two in the tarot this is all about the underneath this is under the surface this is what we can't always see but it's what we feel it's water it's fluid um, it's the moon it's energy it's um, creativity is heightened during this time so any spiritual work that you're doing any creative projects that you're doing are definitely going to get a fresh injection of um, emotion and sometimes it can be hyper emotion so be mindful of that that with pisces energy it does bring it can bring in an oversensitivity to others and to what we're being told and what we were seeing and what we're hearing so again though with all this aquarian energy still present that will help balance that out a bit but overall you know this is a good time i feel uh Things are lifting. It does feel like the energy is lifting a little bit. Yes, of course, there's always going to be some heaviness that's present because of what's going on out in the world. And, you know, Uranus in Taurus, by the way, until 2025, is all about the financial systems. Taurus is the financial system. It's the second house in astrology. It's money. It's resources. Uranus seeks to change all of that. And whether we like it or not, it's bound to change, okay? Saturn seeks to keep things stable and working in a structural manner. So if you keep that in mind, you know, I feel that whatever does come of this ultimately will be for the greater good because Aquarius is also for the greater good of all. It is for the group, it is for the collective consciousness. Um, so there are there is power in numbers, there are power in groups. So again, finding your tribe, finding like-minded individuals that you can be yourself with, that you can converse with, that you have similar viewpoints with. You're not always going to agree with everybody on everything, right? But this is just about being true to yourself, honoring yourself, and taking good care of yourself, and recognizing where things need to change or shift, and being open to new things, being open to growth, being open to change, being open to go down different pathways when Uranus comes in and jolts you, right? And brings in a Uranian surprise because that is likely going to happen. Again, pay very close attention to the 17th through, I would even say until the end of the month because we are having our uh, full moon in Virgo on the 27th. I will definitely come back and do another video for that. But I also wanted to say with Saturn Uranus, 
this is the past. This is why I love astrology. It's cyclical, cycles, constant. And just to kind of give us a little bit of an idea, when Saturn and Uranus squared in 1860, okay, we were under Saturn and Uranus squared during 18, from 1860 to 1862, we had the American Civil War. Then in 1918 through 1920, they were opposing each other, Saturn and Uranus. And that is when the influenza pandemic was very prominent, very pronounced. And then in 1930 through 1931, there was the square again of Saturn and Uranus, and that was the Great Depression. So just to kind of give you an idea, I'm not saying that those things are going to happen again, but those are the kind of, those are the cycles of the Saturn and Uranus square. And then once that energy passes, things have definitely shifted and changed in a pretty profound, large <laughs> manner. So again, look at what's going on on the societal level, but pay very close, even more attention to what's going on on the personal level and honor and acknowledge where you are. And again, like I always say, you know, the only thing that's constant in this world is change, right? So we have to learn to go with the flow a little bit more, even though it's hard to do so, but it's happening whether we want it to or not, right? Take really good care of yourselves, guys. My links are below, lisasalvatore.com, and I'll be back with the video for the full moon. Bye.